hi hello hello hi oh god why do i it's podcast no that's not how i start the show damn it uh i'm so bad at this hey everybody welcome to another episode of jeff has cool friends my name is jeff and i have a very rare uh episode i'm very excited to do this i have three cool friends on the show. They are my very, very, uh, they, they, some of my favorite podcast hosts, some of my best Aww. buds, some of my Aww. favorite people to hug. Just such Aww. a great crew of people. I am joined by Michael Randolph, Todd Schlosser, Paige Wesley from the Horror Virgin and Romancing the Pod. We're doing a collab. Yay. Thanks. How are we doing? Thank you for having us. Yes. Hello. Um, I love you guys. We That's love you. So kind. We love you. We love you. Like we, yeah. you're also great to hug. Yeah. I I um so we I've met I've known Paige for a while. I, I've known Paige through LA comedy. Todd and and Mike, I met when we were recording an episode of the Horror Virgin show. Yeah. We did um I wanted to I was mad you guys had already covered Demon Night. Yep. Um, oh, that's a yeah. great movie. Fury, that's a good yeah. movie. Furious that I couldn't do it. But uh, we ended up doing Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, which I famously love, even though it is a bad movie. Yeah. Fun, though. It's a she, fun The movie. episode is very fun, yeah. It, it is very fun. I loved it very much. And I was like, oh, I've found more of my people, which is <laughs> yeah. harder to do than you think in this world. Oh, very hard. Yeah. So so um, you guys have an incredibly popular couple of podcasts going on, huh? Yeah, they do. They do all right. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> My, Mikey doesn't listen, doesn't really know anything about like no. how many people listen. Like he is just so uninterested in that. And Paige, and I don't think we've ever fully ever talked about this, mm -hmm. but I would put you and I in what I like to call the number whore category where like <laughs> we want to know the stats. I want to yes. know what's affecting the stats so I can yes. push that button more. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah, I feel I feel like I'm less less so than I used to be. Like when we first started out, I was constantly checking like every single day. And now it's like, okay, eh, yeah. maybe every that's, week or two. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Check. So that's yeah. me too now. But you're right, man. Yeah. In the beginning, it was like every four hours. I was like, oh, yeah. oh my God, we got eight more okay, downloads. That's insane. Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's crazy. crazy. I just yeah. do it for the art, Jeff. And honestly, <laughs> Jeff, he does. He's he does. not lying. He, he lying. doesn't even listen. Like, honestly, though, if, if I'm going to take a team, it will be Mikey on this one because... If I start worrying about the numbers, I start letting that affect how I put my show together. And then that's why I kind of stopped looking at them yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Like art, you should be making art for yourself that other people enjoy. Right. And that is kind of one of the things that I do. Like, it's funny that this is my flagship show and it's of all the shows that I do, it's probably the third or fourth most listened to one. I just, oh, sure. this is my baby and I love it. And I don't care about the numbers. I care about the fact that I want to bring people on. I want to promote them. I have a very, very small and rabid group of people that absolutely are amazing and supportive. And that's how we do this. You guys have a massive following, relatively good people. A couple of dicks on Reddit, <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> There's a few. I noticed that too, Jeff. There's a few. <laughs> I was, I, I read one, I read a thing where, and this happens a lot anytime. And it's usually, it's weird. It's, it's, it's leftists tend to be this way where they hate me when I guest on a podcast. And it's usually, they're just like another white guy coming on. I'm like, I, I, I can't, I'm, I don't know how to fix that. I'm so sorry. You just have to own it, Jeff. <laughs> well, and I know you in person. And so I'm like, he would be marching next to you at the march. So like, you know, yeah. Know. Yeah, I do get a lot of that. They're like, oh, great. Another one of these guys. I'm like, yeah, I know, man. I <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it is very interesting. You, I I researched your your shows. You've also been okay. on both of them. I have. Although, yeah. as of this recording, it hasn't, your Romance of the Pod this, episode yeah, hasn't, hasn't dropped. Come out but yet. that comes out this Thursday. So it might by the time this drops. So if you're on my Patreon in two days, Romancing the Pod drops. Yes. And you're going to want to check that out because we got a good one. We uh, got into the family, man. I'm looking yes. forward to that episode coming out. It's you. <laughs> You're the family, man. Um, <laughs> I can't not My wife. do the rock bit in that one. But so like, there's kind of like, you guys have really found a stride, but I didn't realize that there's kind of a, a ship of Theseus 
thing going on with horror virgin and that what it is now is not exactly how the show started because it was yeah. odd you were the nucleus you're the virgin yes both yes. horror and otherwise yes absolutely and you had uh there were other co-hosts and they had to move along and do whatever they were doing and michael came on and then Paige came on Paige, you were previously a guest is that correct yeah, I, I'd been a guest before, but we met at a horror convention because Cult yeah. Podcast, my other show, was at the same or not convention, horror film festival. Yeah, it was uh, Panic Fest. That's the reason yeah, we Panic go to Fest. Panic Fest every year. It's like a celebration yeah. of new hosts. us of getting together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we well, new hosts. Host shopping, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like the combine. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, we if all I, each other. just mm -hmm. about up. <laughs> Yeah, if at that point, but by, by the time we met Paige and Armando and uh, everybody, um, we had been long enough into it that like Clint wasn't there and Mikey was now there, right? So I came in like early, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you were episode no, twenty six, I think, is your first, and then that was yeah, your first 30. guest spot, and then you were on from like thirty on okay, forever. So who just invited Clint? myself to co-host after that? I was and like, honestly. Gonna... I, I was yeah. so happy. I sort of yeah. facilitated that decision being made. Um, yeah, it so, was uh, Todd's friend. Okay. Wow. That's a good answer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So like the premise of the podcast actually started probably five years before it actually happened. Cause I and my buddy Clint were actually in, I was in San Diego. He was in LA. He was uh, writing out there and, um, he wanted to do the podcast with me, the horror virgin, like exactly the premise that it started as it, like five years before we actually did it. And it just never happened. We could never figure out timing and stuff like that. And then, you know, in 2018, we found ourselves both back in Nashville and he was like, Hey, let's do the podcast. And he was like, cool, let's find a, a co-host that's a female. So we could pull from that Lori, like, you know, demographic and like have a different perspective on the episodes right we don't want to be another podcast with like three white dudes talking about shit, you know so because <laughs> yeah. honestly we had done about. that one <laughs> <laughs> we had done that one in a, 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 a in a podcast that i'm so glad is not findable called attention horse and that is no longer on the internet thank I god that's the subtitle of every podcast though it should be that was sort of the that was the impetus of that name anyway i think for me my subtitle is just podcast i want a free mattress Right. Always, yeah, and me undies. Like yeah, I'm holding out for those money. me undies, micromodal fiber, Dude, and that money. Yeah, I had uh, I had Dan Larson from Secret Galaxy on the show a couple weeks ago, a couple nice. episodes ago, and, and uh, one of the things I like, one of the I think it was one of the first things I asked is like, do they how much Magic Spoon do you get? And he's like, as much as I want. And I'm like, that's oh, amazing. Like, like I was like oh, that to me. I was dream. like, but that, that that I mean, the podcast pays for itself, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Clint uh, left. Because he went to the yeah, 20 well. episodes in, he was like, this is too much of a time commitment for me, which I understood. He was working two jobs, too. He was like really busy. So he exited. And honestly, like 20 episodes in, we were getting maybe like 50 to 150 downloads an episode. Like we were like getting a lot of listens, you know, so mm -hmm. it was easier to walk away from then. Yeah. Uh, so he stepped away. Came in and fixed the podcast. Honestly. OK, Mikey, that sounds like you're being a or just making a joke, but like that's true two. in my opinion. <laughs> it sounds like you're being opinion. really mean or funny. No, I, I yeah, yeah I hate this thing, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being both mean and funny. <laughs> but Mikey's like right. He did come in and he like I think I don't know if you knew already that we were firmly a comedy podcast first and a horror movie podcast second. Like Mikey just like understood that we were there to sort of make fun of me if I'm scared of the movie or make fun of the silly parts that come in all horror movies. Some are actually like intentionally silly and those are way fun. But like even like the conjuring was it the conjuring two when it's insidious two with the tea you. kettle? I knew exactly what you're talking about. Oh it's yeah, the best yeah, yeah. foley in the world. It's amazing. Patrick Wilson Enjoy. throws a tea kettle and it just makes this perfect like boom off off her head. Foley is it's amazing. Yeah. It's like gongs off her head. It's like it's someone great. hits like one of those like a gong. Yeah. Pitch pipe things. It's amazing. Yes. But anyway, so like Mikey, Mikey just understood that it was a horror comedy podcast. Well, I have a very serious job and I was like, I don't want to yeah. do this other thing and have it be really serious, too. I want to be like really just like real dumb and with low stakes. Why don't you do that at your other job? 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> give, me a, give me a silly little goof there. Lighten it up. Laughter's the best medicine, right? So being funny at that job has only gotten me in trouble in the past. <laughs> <Those are laughs> Laughter is the best 5150. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then yeah. you have got Paige. Uh and yeah. uh, you know, uh Paige, just a perfect addition. The the your Thank Paige, you. yeah. Paige, you are I think you're underappreciated for how funny you are just in oh, the general you. world. I mean, you get attention for stuff. You're great um, at roast battles and stuff like that. Um, listening to a couple of the episodes and hearing you, like you play off these guys so well, like you guys <laughs> have made this perfect triangle of interaction. Um, you guys really did. It's like you cracked a code. Well, and it's kind That's of really nice. That is very nice. Thank you. And it's kind of been that way since like, I not my guest episode, but like the first episode i came on the conjuring like, two episode the conjuring i think 121 two. Oh, yeah. one, i think 123 it was it 123 okay it's 123 it felt good yeah it kind of just instantly felt good yeah man that was a good day i thought of you guys in in las vegas because i adam todd brown and i went to zach bagan's haunted museum oh, oh it's so cringe it's it's very funny because yes. <laughs> he does these videos that are just so odd. He's like, and like a lot of the leaps he makes um, to mm -hmm. like what happened. He's like, within 30 years of touching this car axle, <laughs> everybody that touched it died. I'm like, died. Oh, that's how time works. And then there would be like, yeah. the further you go on, the more they're like, people passed out. Like uh, people have passed out at this point in time. I'm like, well, we're two and a half hours into the tour. You don't let anybody have water or food. And it's he told us to lock our knees. Uh, so yeah. that's on you. Yeah. There's no place to sit down. I was like, yeah, <laughs> people are passing out. This place is a pit. Uh, he's like, we pumped the smell of popcorn oil into this carnival room. And I was like, I'm going to black out. Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I did think of you guys because there was one of the episodes, one of the rooms was just a rocking chair from the Conjuring people. <laughs> yeah, and, wait, from from Ed and Lorraine yes, or from the movie? From Ed and Lorraine. Oh, and so Connors. and so he was like, uh, and he's telling all the story. And then we're all but like, but yeah, but they're also con artists. Yeah. Right. Like everybody yeah. knows they're con artists. Yeah. Right? yeah. He does have a movie room and he has two movie. He has like props, but two of the movie props are just very funny to me. Because they were one was a a jacket from the crow. Oh, not, nice! Not the one, not not like no. one he was wearing, oh, just a jacket from the crow. <laughs> I mean, and, like that was on like an extra or some shit. It was on. It was on here. It's one of the okay, okay, coats, okay. But it was like, and then the other one was a uh, the 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 jacket covered in paint from What Dreams May Come. What okay. a weird okay. pull! And it's just like because you know, fifteen years later. Robin Williams. And it's like, that's, that's what? not, that's not what this is. And this I'm like, jacket's I'm, not haunted. I'm like watching this. Be but then there's shit like, here's Patrick Swayze's passport. He took two weeks before he left and one of his teeth. And I was like, all right, that's probably on. Like if haunted for real. <laughs> but also, probably... how'd you get yeah. that? Yeah. Like, oh, he's got who gave money. that to you? This guy, oh. oh, he must own half of Discovery. It's like Rob Dyrdek and MTV. Oh yeah. Like you yeah, can't yeah, go yeah. on that network without seeing this son of a on there. Well, I think he's tried to buy, I believe, the La Bianca mansion multiple times and people have and I he may own it at this point. I'm not 100 percent, but I know that people are always mad about it. He, he does <laughs> seem like the Chris Angel of the paranormal, right? Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I've yeah. seen the show for other podcasts and it's really just him talking shit on ghosts, which I do respect. Yes. Um, <laughs> like, that's the one thing, like trying to pick a fight with a ghost. I love that. Like a ghost battle? Yeah. Oh. 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 Top, oh. The top rope. That's, uh, <laughs> but it, it is fascinating. And it made me think of you guys because like throughout there, there was a lot of like horror movie kind of energy um, that you'd go through there. And it was very funny. I did get a t-shirt, um, but that was because it was free with the VIP no. door. Nice. Where they let you go into a basement or the, the all the VIP <laughs> stuff is like, now what you can walk through the clown doll room. And, all right. <laughs> and you're like i'm good this was worth the extra 35 dollars. i've been yes. to the museum of death in los yeah. angeles i'm fine yeah but it, it it sure was something so uh okay so going back then all right so you guys have this um through here and i thought about how i was going to do this i don't normally interview three people at a time but i was actually really excited to do this so i 
kind of am making it more like a questions about the history of what you guys have been doing. And sure. sure. The first thing I'm going to ask is if somebody's never heard your podcast, what episode would you throw them to? That's not mine because obviously the correct answer would be go to the one that. Oh, that's what I was going to say, but <laughs> Mikey, hang on, hang on, Mikey. What episode was Jeff on? He was on aliens versus predator Requiem. Okay. I honestly thought he would have forgotten already, even though no. we talked we about it earlier today. Ago. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you guys got no idea how uninvested I am in this show. <laughs> <laughs> that is his vibe every episode, and I love it. When you be, mm. make it a running joke, you never have to get invested. Yeah. 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 yeah that's just, just commitment the... to the bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mikey has like low efforted his way into being a fan favorite. And I yes. love that. That is like <laughs> failing forward. And the audience surrogate or whatever they call it. <laughs> surrogate. I do like the idea that like, as you're saying that you're like about one third of all fans think he's the favorite. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet it's way higher than that. That is gonna. I happen. would say if you're going to start, I would start on Paige's first episode. I really think it sets the vibe for the Me last couple too. years. Me Yeah. Okay, well, what is that? The Conjuring. It's, uh, the Conjuring 2. Okay. Yeah, 123. 123. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually would say Malignant. Malignant is one of my favorite episodes of all time because it's so oh, crazy. I do like Malignant. And you know. the movie is crazy, but it's like, that is a crazy energy. It, or Pope's Exorcist, I feel like, has a similar energy where we loved the movie. It's a recent episode, right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty recent. Like we loved it and can't stop saying crazy things about it. And I those are my favorites. Cause like when we hate a movie, yeah, okay, that's fun. I like it more when we love it, but recognize that it's crazy. Those are <laughs> my Atkins favorite episodes. Yeah. yeah. Anything with Tom Atkins in it, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah now neither the, neither the creeps, Halloween three. Night of the creeps. Boom. Yeah, isn't favorites. it funny how Halloween three everyone hated it, and then twenty fifteen happened. Everyone's like, "I've always loved this movie, and I've always said wonderful <laughs> things about it." People you are like, trying to do it with Alien three now, and I will not. No. I will not. <laughs> Halloween three is a movie for adults. When like when you have kids and you want to abandon them to go drink and solve a mystery, like that's <laughs> who this movie was made for. I do feel like a lot of horror fans are get, like to gaslight people to seem cooler about what movies they like because yeah. <laughs> everyone hated Halloween three. And then there was just like one time it's like Garfield. All of a sudden people love Garfield now. I feel like people like Garfield ironically. Yeah. Like I don't think people are genuinely into it. I think they're just like how funny that I put Garfield on. Things. They'll put money in, uh, in old Jimmy's pocket either way. There you go. But um, yeah, so I, always, I, I, I always find that really interesting. The Halloween, three love so i think it makes sense to me though because a lot of people like when that movie came out probably had better father figures so like by the time it got to like when mikey and i saw it i was like on the screen watching this guy like run away to bang and drink another woman like he i was like that's like woman? my dad that he, drank, he drank all of that woman. woman he drank her down deep no um, but you know ironically, what i mean ironically the only kids he saved at the end were his own <laughs> potentially i i do think that it's it was expectations at the time where i think if it was not a halloween movie and i think it, yeah. if it had just been released on its own at the time people would have been like this is wild and it's a cult classic and i'm here for it and i think the reason it got so much hate initially is because people were like where's michael myers and like you know that's what happens when you got a franchise and a shape michael myers is boring yeah yes that character mm -hmm. is boring I've never understood the love for that character. Like the design is neat, I guess. Like, but like after that first movie, if you're like, we're still doing this. I, I mean, Casey Jones wore it better. I'm just going to say it. Like he's boring. I feel like I can kick his ass. Yeah. I like Jason better because I feel like Jason's in on the joke. Jason's a bit funnier. Yeah. Jason, Jason knows, is funnier. Jason has great timing. Yeah. Like he has good yeah. comedic timing. I support jason Voorhees a lot more i think the outfit's a little crisper yeah i think he also well and it shows wear and tear which i like too because yeah. michael always looks the same he also evolved yeah his like image always evolved he's like well for now i'm just going to be this kind of mysterious wraith killing people and then be a little creepy weirdo kid jumping out mm -hmm. of the pond and then it's like what a guy with a fucking gunny sack on his head at one point 
Yeah, yeah that was the early to... on. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Early on, yeah, he he has the sack. Then he got the waterlogged. And then the hockey mask. Yeah, I mean that's why people yeah. do say Jason is like the Madonna of horror slashers. Always reinventing himself. Yeah. Plus, for all the jumpsuits he ruins, he needs a lot of material. <laughs> uh, and also, he <laughs> guy Richie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, didn't he, he make it Britney that. Spears at the Oscars too? Yeah, he did. And then yeah. he put her in a sleeping bag and smashed her against a tree. <laughs> so good. So That's good. why he's and, canceled now. And they call yeah. that back in Jason X, which I absolutely love. Jason X yes. is probably my favorite Friday the 13th. We haven't gotten to it yet. We just we did haven't. Jason Takes Manhattan. And so Todd's never seen it. We only do Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. So we've only had so many since we started five years ago. We also only do Halloweens on Halloween. If I may take my hat off and throw it in the ring. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> when you guys finally get a Friday the 13th for Jason X, yeah. please activate me. I would love I would love to come on to that. It's just so funny. <laughs> Fun little and, and and it's also like the evolution. It's not like, oh, Michael Myers is loose in a hospital again. <laughs> like, uh, hospitals oh again. Hospitals are suburban neighborhoods. Yeah. Jason's gone yeah. to hell. Yeah. And mm -hmm. space. And space. Like, Jason and gets space. into adventure. Jason's gone to hell and back. He went on a cruise. He went to the hood. Wait, that's the leprechaun. Wait, when does Jason go to the hood? Oh, when he takes Manhattan. I guess kind of. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll allow it. I mean, it. without saying out loud, that's what he was doing. That is absolutely what he was doing. Let's not. He went to 80s yeah, New York. No, for sure. Like, he he went sure. to Times Square in the 80s. I think he went to like 80s Vancouver, TBH. I don't think it yeah. was actually. <laughs> yeah, man, man, yeah. Vancouver. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they had the budget. For, oh, they did not. Yeah, they couldn't even drive through New York. They were like, there no. is there is like one Times Square shot in that movie, yes. and that's almost it for yeah. shots in New York. It's daylight. You're like, I, yeah. <laughs> I just took this from working, girl? <laughs> Speaking of driving, though, somebody just posted a TikTok from, I believe it's Halloween 4, the one we just did, where Michael Myers drives a car, and there's a shot of him in the background looking both ways before making a turn. You got to. He's a responsible driver, Paige. What? So he doesn't kill people? It's Michael Myers. Yeah, but he doesn't want to kill he doesn't want to yeah. himself. Wow. Yeah. In, the, in the age of CTE, Paige. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a 30 by 30 right now of like Jason, like looking back at his life and like, like his friends talking about him and like, yeah, he, 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 uh, he went a little Muhammad Ali at the end, you know, because he's like been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's been His hit a interview, lot of times. Yes. It's just silence, you know, because they don't speak <laughs> in the movies. Yeah. Just two minutes. <laughs> just two minutes of him nodding for two minutes. Various nodding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love this and I hate it at the same time. Yeah. It'll be called the 13 for 13. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so so as you guys, you know, you, you go through there, and so you suggest episode one, two, three. One, two, three. Very easy. Come on, baby, say you love me. Yes. Are we? It's Gloria Estefan cast now. So. Oh yes. What can we do? Oh my god. Side note: I remember when we were like teenagers going up to Montreal. Don't ask why. And we did that. Did you ever do that thing where you do like the celebrity draft of like who would be on your list of like. Of like celebrities to bang. Yeah. This is an ongoing bit. My husband. We call it the spit list. Yeah, we call it the spit list on the show, but this is an ongoing bit my husband and I have in our house. But we we do it a little differently where we, the joke is that we, those are our second spouses. Uh, oh. And we're just like, when I leave you for insert person. <laughs> but right now my husband's joke pick that we keep making fun of is we call it Big Titty Kevin James, which is just the Love meme Titty image Kevin of, James, yeah. of Kevin James with tits. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, we love mm -hmm. that. It is funny in L.A. It's not it's not a good joke to have that list. Yeah, because it's possible. Because then you just pick somebody like a like a like attainable. Right. Oh, mine's Sebastian Stan, so it's not attainable at all. Well, exactly. But it, but if you were just like if if you'd picked you know some WB Greg or Robinson or something or yeah if somebody <laughs> like, that, thought, yeah. that was on a CW show twelve years ago, you're like, mm -hmm. there's a very good. They actually work at the coffee shop that I go to, like that. <laughs> that makes it a little bit more jarring. Well, so we were doing that driving up, and it was like around 
2000, I want to say like, you know, and so like, you know, it's your Sarah Michelle Gellers and your Eliza Dushkus and stuff. And then we went to one guy first round. He goes, Gloria Stefan. Go for him. And we were like, I'm sorry. And he's just like, and he had like a CD and he's like, look at this picture. Look at it. And I'm like, first off. She's beautiful. I mean, yeah, she was was pretty hot. Like we looked at him and we were like, did you think somebody was going to snake her out from under you here? (laughs) It is the year 2000. <laughs> she has not had a hit. I respect her as a first round. She had I that do music too. video with the all bangers, cat, right? No, that's Paula Abdul. But okay, thanks for playing. I bet that was probably next on his <laughs> list in the draft. I mean, yeah, that's opposite to tract. Uh, and I mm-hmm. do have an animation cell of MC Scat Cat. No, yes. shit, really, yes. or do? Yeah. That's awesome. I sure do. I have the weirdest animation cells. I have some. Just really f-ed up stuff. Yeah. And he was like, and we were like, we're, we were all just like, we're only doing three rounds of this, dude. Nobody was going to get to Gloria Estefan, not especially not the first round. Like, that was such a bold choice that we were like, look, man, we appreciate you leaving room. I love, I love <laughs> that you guys were like calling out Sarah Michelle Geller, Eliza Dushku. And the whole time he was like, please don't say Gloria Estefan. Yeah. Please don't say Gloria Estefan. Please don't say Gloria Estefan. He's, he's like, I'm coming up with the dark horse and they're not going to, I'm going to. He's like, I can't believe it. I can't believe this happened. I got Gloria Estefan. It's who again, beautiful. It's like a fantasy draft. <laughs> Quite literally. I picked her off the waiver wire. It's fine. Yeah. And so it was just a, a very funny event um, to see experience there. Now, when we went through here, I think the obvious question that we're going to have, and I think it does sort of lean itself to Todd uh, being the last person to answer this because he is the virgin, but for Michael Page and then Todd, like, what is your favorite horror film? Like, if you or like your top two or something like that. If you're like, I can't pick between these two. Mikey and I have the same top two, I think, Ooh. or close to it. The thing is, one of my. All right, wait, are you asking quality or scare? Like, what is the is most your, scary? the one that That's you would different. like to Scariest watch the most? Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The thing is one of my favorite all time favorites. Yeah, and then uh, I have like a weird connection with this the collector franchise, which is like two films from the early two thousands. And they both that, like, slap. We've we've seen both of them. I love them. They're kind of they're 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 really cool. Like the first one is like a a cat burglar versus a serial killer, but he's kind of Saul esque, where he's the guy breaks into the house to rob them, but there's a serial killer doing Saul torture to all the family. He decides to help them, so it's like a cat and mouse game. And I love I love that franchise. Well, that sounds fun. It's they really were making fun, a third man. one during COVID, and then they shut down production and never started up again. It's the maybe that's for the best. No, I wonder what the COVID <laughs> shot would look like. Okay, so Paige, is yours also the collector? Because I'm assuming. Uh, it's no, the thing. no, the thing. Yeah, the thing is Same. one of my favorite movies of all time. I am, I'm super, uh, I'm super into the Alien franchise, but all, I pick and choose because three and four, no thanks. But I don't mind the prequels. I know a lot of people don't like them. I'm fine with them. And then I like to nerd out on The Shining, which I know is a controversial opinion. If people read the book, they don't like the movie. I understand. But I'm a big Shining. Controversial opinion. I love one of the most loved horror films of all time. (laughs) The one that I believe, because in preparation for this, I did watch a video of the top 100 horror films of all time. And I believe that was number one. That doesn't surprise me. Just just purely on, on cultural significance, yeah. I would say. It was like Jaws was at the top. Yeah, it would have to be. I love Jaws. The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. Probably. But like all of those movies are movies that like were groundbreaking. Like Jaws yeah. invented the blockbuster more or less. Like that's how groundbreaking yeah. that movie was, yeah. you know? And same with The Exorcist. The Exorcist kicked off like horror, like in general as a genre. Anyway. Religious, yeah. Yeah, Reli- yeah, yeah, yeah. Religious horror. There, there's been debate as to whether or not this is a horror movie, but Terminator is one of my favorite movies of all time. We did an episode on it. We did yeah. do an episode on it. It's a slasher. <laughs> it's a slasher that is also a robot. It's I mean, a it's techno a, slasher. It's yeah, a shooter. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. It's a metal skeleton. Yeah, wrapped, wrapped. It's, a, it's an Austrian bodybuilder wrapped around a metal skull. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could see. I could see. It grows living tissue. Yeah. I don't think I would classify that as horror per se, but also Silence of the Lambs, I do classify as horror and Seven as well. And I don't necessarily think those two films are. I also love Seven. Seven's one of my faves. Yeah, that's good. So good. 
Seven's really. I good. would argue that Terminator in that first movie is exactly like a Jason or Michael figure, it but he is. has a gun. It's- Terminator 2 diverts, but like yes, the original does. Terminator is a slasher. I yeah. Would say. Story structure. Whereas I wouldn't say Terminator 2 is a horror movie, although I would love to do an episode on it. We've already done the first one. <laughs> we probably can. I mean, it's, I guess if you view Terminator, like what's the T-1000, but a more terrifying version of the T-800. Yeah. Like, yeah. And Robert boom. Patrick is objectively scarier as the Terminator yeah. than Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger yeah. was. Yeah. yeah as a terminator yeah because he's an everyman and he blends in which is what the original terminator was supposed to be yeah. in the original drafts but they cast arnold and it's iconic and whatever anyway go ahead yeah, they nailed it so todd <laughs> yeah. what about you man favorite favorite horrors? I, I really like the horror comedies like i i am still scared by these horror movies i don't love watching the scary you are ones. legitimately scared by these things yes people ask me if i still am and yes i still am like i think it's a nervous system thing i don't think right. it's like a, i'm gonna get over it thing this is good you because know? i have a follow-up question because okay <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have a lot of love for i mean okay so let me do two of my favorites and then i'll do two actual scary picks so um my favorite horror movie i think is tucker and dale versus evil it's very fun uh, very good i just really love the relationship between the two guys and how they just Keep like they're very posy, yeah, yeah. It's just it's so fun. Uh, and then I really love uh, the Leslie Vernon, the rise of Leslie Vernon. Um, it's like a it's it's sort of a low budget, like silly take on like slasher movies, and they create their own slasher, and that's Leslie Vernon. And I, I love the guy who plays Leslie Vernon, like the dude's awesome in that movie he's so good anyway so those are my two favorite like horror movies but like if you're looking for like what's a good horror movie i think hereditary is one of the best movies i've ever seen let okay. alone like any genre it's just ever hit um, under the covers from it, yeah. it is also the scariest <laughs> movie his eyes yeah yeah <laughs> but i mean like and this is probably just because it deals with some of the trauma that I've dealt with, but like it, it like really messed me up though. That's like my scariest movie ever, but it is a beautiful movie. I've heard that about, you know, hereditary is just one of those movies that I haven't watched. Um, it's not that I have any problem with, I'm not like, I'm famously not a huge horror fan. Like I, I, I do material. About it. Like I'll never Same. be afraid of a haunted doll. Not one. Cause like I could be a haunted it. dolls f- ass. Yeah. Here sideways, I would I haunted would be, children same way. The first literally, child, oh yeah, give me the children of the corn. I will f- up that mm-hmm. town. <laughs> I was literally uh while over like Thanksgiving break, went to my girlfriend's parents' house to have Thanksgiving, and while I was there, I sent Mikey and Paige one photo. Would you one of one of you like to explain what that one photo yeah, is? Yeah, it was, it was their just family a- photo. It was a curio <laughs> cabinet full of haunted dolls. Uh, and and by haunted, I just mean porcelain. <laughs> that is the room we slept in. So like, oh, yeah, I, I don't like scary shit. <laughs> yeah, you're like, hey, we're going to get killed by this, right? I know. I was like, yeah. that's a case full of murderers. Y'all just like locked me in here with. A haunted porcelain doll is even easier. Like Chucky, you can dent Chucky for a while and he's still going to go for it. Yeah. Porcelain doll comes out. You're like, well, I'm going to hit you once and you are done. Yep. I mean, they are real glass Joes if you want to like really get into it because they'll pop for nothing. Yeah. It's a good yep. punch out reference. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to, I believe, the second or third episode of Nerd that I did with Dre Alvarez. We did it punch out. Nice. Ooh. If I was locked in a room of haunted porcelain dolls, I'd be like, you locked it. You're going to roar shock them. <laughs> <laughs> You're me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it would just be him stumbling around the room, like he would be apologizing for everyone he crushed. He'd be like, "Oh shit, I'm so sorry." And oh just... damn it! Oh no! <laughs> I'd be toying with Chucky, like like one of those like early Muhammad Ali fights when he was the challenger. Yeah. weren't very good. He'd be like <laughs> dancing around him and peppering him with little shots. That's what I'd be doing. Chucky wouldn't do shit on me. Put him in the sharpshooter. I mean, you can punch him around the room easily. I yeah. think yeah. the one thing that Child's Play as a franchise doesn't do a great job of is really showcasing how sneaky he would have to be to get away with any murders. Right. Yes. They just, they leaned into the camp, which I, I know, which I love. As a kid, it was terrifying to me. And as an adult, I'm like, I fucked this guy up so fast. Yeah. yeah. I have a question for you guys. Uh, oh, my follow-up question to the, what's the scariest thing you've seen in a movie, Todd? What, what movie magic oh. scared you so much? Cause that's, 
I mean, I'm assuming Michael and Paige, you can't really come up with an answer to that because you guys understand how movies work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we, know, we do. It's fake. We do, but like, there, there's still stuff that particularly gets either of us. Like, uh, I, I famously blood test. Like, no. blood test is an amazing moment, and the chest moment. biter. I these are both from it. the thing. Yeah, yes. amazing moments. But yeah, no, I famously the th- the movie that has scared me the most in my tenure at Horror Virgin was uh, the Taking of Deborah Logan, Oof, and I yeah. think horror is so personal and it's yeah. like i have a, a very aggressive family history of dementia and alzheimer's and that's kind of the focal point of that movie so it oh. i'm primed for it but there's a scene where he like a character goes to like investigate a window that had been nailed shut that suddenly opened and he turns and she's just right behind like it's oh f- <laughs> terrifying it's like so that scary. movie scary and like and oddly enough the thing that everyone talks about in that movie is when she unhinges her jaw like a snake spoilers and like eats a kid that doesn't scare me at all the shit where it's just somebody standing in a room being like where am i terrifying <laughs> so like i i feel like mikey and i even though we know how movies work uh still probably each yeah. have have scary moments yeah. okay then mike what's yours uh, I really like, I think movies that scare me are like haunted house kind of movies. Like there's a ghost story. There's a lot of like spooks, the conjuring movies. Well, the first two were pretty like scary paranormal activity. And it also depends on like the setting you're watching it. So yeah. like if you like a theater experience with paranormal activity and stuff was really scary and good, like a room full of people just holding their breath, uh, conjuring the same way. Um, Hereditary some, where she runs out of that corner. Yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> psychologically disturbing stuff, too. Um, I'm just like, like, I, I watched Saltburn this weekend and it was not a horror. I don't you could probably classify it, but like the protagonist, if you want to call it that, uh, was just terrifying in like a really psychopathic kind of way. That kind of stuff freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. Is that a little too close to home? Do you think I'm a psychopath? So, yeah, I guess. Yeah. No, I mean, like with your day job. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it can be. I like mean... My day job is I'm a serial killer. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you familiar with Dexter? So, like, uh, bringing my work home. It's exhausting. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. How, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike, how do you find the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so talk, well, well, that's what I mean. I watched that show, you and that guy. I was like, man, I've never put one tenth of an effort into a relationship that this guy has. And I'm like, not even in a positive way. I think when your last girlfriend told you you don't put enough effort in, you took it too far. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He took it well, as a request. Right. I don't have the square footage for a glass cube or whatever. I know. Like, I, and you know how hard they are to install? Yeah. Todd, what, 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 what scene, what's the scene that really got you going on this one? Uh, the scariest I've ever, or I guess the most scared I've ever been was in a movie theater in 2018 when I saw Hereditary for our third episode. Um, it was actually the night I met Natalie, fun fact. And in fact, Paige, you mentioned the scare when she runs out of the corner. I call it the naked man misdirect scare because like you see, what, what is her name? She's amazing in that movie. Tony Collette. Tony Collette. You see yeah. Tony Collette literally floating on the ceiling behind the yeah, crawling across the yeah, ceiling uh, behind him. her son, who is like they're trying to possess her son. And then it cuts to a naked man just like laughing in a doorway. That's the new thing, right? Old naked people. That's Full the frontal. Yeah, a lot yeah. of it. Either Terrifying. way, you're like, what the f- is happening? You like lean in super hard. You're like, maybe he should get that mold checked out. And and it like cuts to the fireplace and the she's bullshit. just running out from a direction you would not expect her to be in. And it's, I literally stood up in the theater and yelled very loudly and then slowly sat down. And as the tension in the scene sort of dissipates, yeah. uh, pockets of people started laughing out loud at me. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and to like, to give Todd a little bit of credit, not only is it a misdirect with the naked guy, yeah. but it also focuses on a scene that's shot in shadow and yeah. lit very specifically so that it obscures the far reaches of the corner. But because you're watching this movie, your eyes instinctively look for someone there and she's too fast and coming at you. And it's, I don't know a single person that has not immediately at least recoiled or jumped when that happens in that yeah. movie it's, a, love, it's the perfect jump scare i it's love so scary i said Paige knows how movies work and she's like i'm gonna show you exactly that i know how movies work i I'm did go to film school i'm gonna you literally went to film school. <laughs> yeah. went to film school 
That was that was very funny because you're just like, let me explain to you how scaring people works in film. Yes. I'm like mm-hmm. that's an excellent point. Yeah, that's that's really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I remember my grandmother was like a movie bootlegger off of like HBO and all that stuff in the 80s. Nice. She had like a massive library of home brewed VHS stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Like, like didn't we all Don't legitimately you like days? yeah, she had like thousands of movies. As soon as a new movie would come onto one of those channels, she would record it. So there were these like three films per movie, like you know, the S, you know, the film recorded SP straight yeah. through. And um she thought Gremlins was the funniest movie in the world. She's I love right. Gremlins. She's right. That movie's amazing. But when you are seven, so that movie's terrifying. Gremlins yeah. is yeah. not the funniest movie in the world. Gremlins yeah. is gonna make you afraid of your Christmas tree for the rest of your life. Right. Okay. Or be afraid Tell that your us. dad's going to get stuck in the chimney and none of your friends are going to listen to you. No, that part was funny. Uh, we didn't have a chimney. Made it easy. But uh, I tell you what, we had Christmas tree. We had lush, thick Christmas trees that could hide a gremlin real quick. And that was I can see absolutely that. terrifying. Um, speaking of things we do real quick, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Jeff May. Some of you people are listening to the podcast on that Patreon. Some of you are listening for free a week later. Head on over to that Patreon. You can get early access to uncensored episodes with bonus content, or you can sign up to be a producer. That would be an and, I guess. And I will say your damn name in the middle of my show. So, folks, guess what we're going to do right now? Are we going to read names? We're going to say some names. Say my name. Say my name. And we can we can comment on them if we want to. Do they pick fun ones or just okay? No, God, this, that's not that's not a one we can comment. Oh, don't worry. Don't you worry <laughs> me this direction. Justin Wood, his name is Justin Wood. Uh, mm-hmm. Also the name of a friend of mine. And I was like, are you the, this is a weird question, but are you the Mike? Yeah. He's like, no, I'm a fan. Uh, I love your work. And I was All like, right. oh, well, you're just awesome then. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Thank you better, Thanks. Justin Wood. Thanks, supported bro. Justin Wood. <laughs> um, shout out to Bart Fartigan. Shout out to Dan <laughs> Adamski, world's okay. humblest man. Oh, humblest <laughs> man in the world! I've got to, I've got to print out new business cards now. I just, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that. A very special shout out to Norm from Cheers. Uh, Amazing. He, he's on the, he's on the Two Faced tier, which means he also gets packages in the mail from me every month. Mm, shout out oh. to Dan Hackroyd. Shout out to Mind Freak Five Fifty Five says, "Stop Cop City." Oh well, I yes. didn't realize Chris Angel was a supporter of yours. That's awesome. <laughs> he is. That's why. That's why I had to mention him. I have to mention him in every show, which is why I brought his name up earlier. <laughs> or else we'll never be able to stop Cop City. I'm sure his marketing budget is much lower. That makes sense. Yeah. It's called product <laughs> placement, Todd. Baby, get on my I know. level. <laughs> get on my level, or I'm get Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh sends individual <laughs> packages. <laughs> over 45 options per week. Don't do Hello Fresh. It's wasteful just cook just cook people just get food just get food you don't have to pay all this extra money. get food right. however you can don't you I, have to cook with get uh, hello fresh anyway i think mikey yeah. that's the one where you like you they send cook. you the yeah. ingredients yeah, in the you cook it up. i made mac and cheese with hello fresh and use seven pots i was like this is this can't be right i will also <laughs> it was good it. though right I will add that if HelloFresh sponsors this podcast, I will go back and delete everything we are talking about right now. <laughs> hey, HelloFresh is the greatest invention that ever existed. HelloFresh did just do an ad buy on Romancing the Pod. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Can't wait for that to show up on Thursday. Literally today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on the December 15th episode, so you're in the clear, Jeff. Oh, you damn. Go. Yeah, What's you missed it be? by two weeks. Fred Claus, four Christmases. What do we got going on there? I I don't know. You guys I, have already done four Christmases. I checked. We yeah, we, <laughs> we had we did. I'm I very think... aware. No, I che- I che- like I now that I know you guys, I think of my favorite things, and then I try to see if you guys have done them, so I can call dibs ahead of time. <laughs> I'm just I like, like that. all right. In- There's we have a few guests who do that. I've got I've got a guest lined up who cannot wait to do True Lies once once Christmas is over. Oh yeah, shit, that's... Blaine. Yeah, we need to do yeah. that. The fact that True Lies is even allowed to be on a romancing like that doesn't make sense. It doesn't belong in either of those two shows. parameters. Yeah, a little bit. Like, is there is um, there romance in this film? Is that? Mo- I will say, True Lies is a phenomenal film. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. and it's about a, like a husband reconnecting with his wife. Yeah, yeah. It's about an Austrian bodybuilder lying about being a computer salesman and everybody believing him for some. <laughs> 
<laughs> which comes back in a later Terminator sequel too that he was just like I work at computers and you're like no you didn't <laughs> um, shout out to normal man Andrew McGuire shout out to check out this month's nerd with Dre and Jeff we just covered Home Alone 2 and in December we have maybe more than one episode coming if you're a patron Ooh. nudge nudge wink wink I just watched Home Alone 2 yeah, it was like those pranks would kill people, like murder people. Oh, the Home Alone 2? Yeah. Home Alone 2 is insane because it is the exact same movie. Yeah, it they is. don't even try to hide it. Like there, except there's a gun, which I like. Mm -hmm. And Tim Curry, which I like. Love. Same. Tim Curry's the man. Always, always love Tim Curry. I honestly think but they also become the sticky bit they become the sticky bandits. That's a yeah. way different concept. Instead different. of the wet bandits, yeah. That's not mm -hmm. wet, that's sticky. <laughs> Come on. I, I also thing, think yeah. that Home Alone is my favorite home invasion horror movie. It, yeah. There, remember there was that big meme that Kevin became Saw? Oh, <laughs> love. That was I mean, I'd buy that. Yeah. yeah. So here's what he wrote. He wrote, oh, get your Coca-Cola and cheese pizza. And turn <laughs> oh, yes. Nerd on Home Alone 2. By the way, Home Alone 2, that is more or less just a reskinning of Home Alone 1, made uh, $359 million at the box office uh -huh. in 1992, guys. My screenwriting degree is useless. It, it is. is, and I'm so sorry to agree <laughs> with you on be, that fact. To be fair, I don't really feel like we can talk too much shit on John Hughes. Oh, um, yeah. No, he's it's John Hughes. Yeah. I do love the story behind Home Alone 1 and how Chris Columbus got it because Chris Columbus was doing Christmas Vacation and he just told John, he's like, Chevy Chase is a piece of shit. I can't work with him. He's like, here, have Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> Which financially seems like a, a very good move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you adjust out. for inflation, that $359 million becomes $787 million. Yeah. That yeah. movie made a shit ton of money. And that's, that's again, just, Marvel money. that's again, just the second one, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, it's a strange scenario. Shout out to watch me use these prehensile nipples to pick up pennies off the floor. <laughs> what? I got to tell you. <laughs> How much does that Patreon cost? Yeah, where is that OnlyFans link? Shout out to this uh, this uh, sponsor for this is that's the I feel uncomfortable when I read that name. And I <laughs> love that. I love that. About it. <laughs> we have a patron yeah. named Sex Caliber Bones a lot. That's and I favorite. love saying that name. Sex oh, yeah. Caliber Bones a lot is the best. That's a good one. Shout out to the Oatmeal Savage. Oh. That's a good one. I like that one. I like yeah. all the They're really fun. Shout out to Call Me Sean or whatever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, whatever. Yep. Whatever. 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 God. Shout out says, the Tubi Terror Bunny says, the strike may be over, but egg Bob Iger anyway, because f*** him. Yeah. Agree. Fair. Also, yeah. I just love that he loves Tubi. He's like a huge yeah. fan of Tubi, and he I definitely also uses his email address. Yeah, I was in a documentary on Tubi, so yes, she was. That's right. My husband watches Tubi a lot. Ooh. What was it on? It was on Shakespeare. It was called To Be or Not To Be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, that's been a good episode. Thank you all so much. <laughs> and that right now is a great example of why Mikey is like my on favorite person. I love it. Uh, there was a documentary on Nexium. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. It's a good move. Oh, because the cult podcast. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. I watched Mikey do what he just did at a party like nine times one night. And then I was like, I have to meet this person and make friends with this person. And that's how I met Mikey. That's your meet cute. It was at my friend Chris is like my best friend, like in life, Chris. I was at his place and Chris knows Mikey. And that's how I met Mikey. And then when Clint left, I was like, oh, I know who is going to replace Clint. I know a guy. Someone who is very funny and doesn't realize it. <laughs> and so I got Mikey on the podcast. Nice. I, coincidentally, I am in a horror documentary. Really? Are you really? <laughs> yeah. I'm not, well, sort of. It's for Spooky World, the okay. uh, America's horror theme park. And it was from central Massachusetts. It's called Spooktacular the Movie. There's a horror theme park? America's horror theme park. Spooky world. It was a uh, Massachusetts based. And David Berlino, who's actually my neighbor, this is, he was like, hey, you ever heard of Spooky World? I was like, yeah, I grew up in Massachusetts in the 90s. It was like all we had. And he was like, I created that. Now, it was like meeting a celebrity. I was like, get the f*** out of here. <laughs> 
He done the show. Go back and listen to the David Bernalino episode, everybody. Shout out to Mr. Billy Beck, who just recently had a birthday. Happy birthday to him. Shout out to Carson. I want my Billy Beck, Billy Beck, Billy Beck, Billy Beck. Chili. Exactly. Billy Beck birthday. Yes. <laughs> Barbecue day. Shout out to Carson. Carson. Shout out to Aldo Vargas is a couple months behind on his podcast, but he'll hear this eventually. I appreciate that he's still giving me money. Uh, even hey, love it. Listening. Thank you. At least um, we can do. Shout out to Happy Holidays from the Ghost of Dave Thomas, a ghost. the founder of Winties. Yeah. Oh my God. Always free. She never frozen. Yeah, that the square because they don't cut corners. Yeah. Thanks for that spicy chicken, it man. It was really good when he was alive. Oh yeah. 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 Shout out to I'm going to start calling Yoda Old Grogu just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I support this 100%. I would love to watch people's eyes. As it happens. Shout out to this is a good one. Mashed potatoes are the brioche buns of side dishes. Oh, yeah. All right. You can interpret that in any way. But the way this is being interpreted is, I think, is that Jeff does not necessarily care for either. Oh, interesting. All right. I am not a brioche bun fan. They do not belong in burgers. That was never intended. And it's, I love a brioche bun. It's a dessert. It's a dissolving dessert bread. There's no reason a greasy, fatty hamburger should be on it. I feel about pretzel buns. Pretzel I, buns are good. Oh, I do love pretzel buns. I used to order brioche buns with like burgers with blue cheese on them. So you got like the funk of the blue cheese, oh. the the buttery nature of the meat, and then that sweet brioche kind of cut the sharpness of the cheese. That. Oh. Give me that funk. That sounds so that good. Breath. <laughs> I'm like imagining the breath that comes off of that. And I'm like, oh, I would I'm have sure. to carry Listerine in my car. Of yeah. course. Yeah, that is everyone should. It's like your mouth would be like a graveyard after eating. Yeah, it would taste so good. Is it that... would it would smell like the movie Phantasm in your mouth, and I'd be yep. here for it. Here I, for the it. brioche buns, though, like they're they're designed to be like a pull-apart dessert bread. Like that's what it that's how it was created. But the French, by the way, do not understand why we do this, but they don't understand why we do much. Um, I've been to France. Their food was mid. <laughs> when you have a greasy burger, it like dissolves all the bread. Yeah. Are you eating this like gummy kind of like wet bread? Ugh. I've never asked what kind of bun does it come on when I yeah. like order a burger? Well, oh, they'll but... tell you if it's a brioche bun. They will. Oh, will they? Yeah. Okay. They tell you. But also one time I've been done wrong by flaxseed buns at bougie burger places. So I ask, but I also love most breads. So yeah. I'm biased. That's sort of how I feel about it. Like I would f with any sort of bready bun. I'm here for it. I like yeah. a classic hamburger bun. If, if I'm getting a burger, like, like put some put some butter or mayo and grill it, grill it down, and then that creates the seal so that the juices don't soak really fast in through the burger. If you just put raw bun out there and then you throw a burger on it, by the time it gets out there, it's like soaked through. Also, why is the bottom bun the thin one? That's where yeah, all that makes no goes. sense. It should be the thicker one. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I also order my burgers uh, medium rare, so That's like gross. it's crazy juicy. I may so. I may steaks medium rare. If it's single origin, yep. medium rare. Mm -hmm. If it's mm -hmm. question mark origin, medium well. I got to go brown in, brown out on that one because I don't know how many cows are in that burger. And I don't know what those cows have been up to. True. Mm -hmm. Sure. Not stopping me. I order my steaks rare, like as rare as they will Ooh, bring it to like the blue? table. Yep. Mm. Walk it past a hair dryer. Yeah. Oof. Tomahawk yep. steak last night for the first time in my life. How are you awake? How did that go? I, I'm so tired. It was amazing. <laughs> Mikey won the potluck. How many ounces, Mikey? 30. I was like, it's a tomahawk steak, so it's at least a pound and a half. <laughs> Bro, I went to a steakhouse at my last convention that I was at because, like, the company paid for it, whatever. The smallest steak they had was 10 ounces. I ate five and went home. How do you eat a 30-ounce steak? How do you only eat five yeah. ounces okay. of steak, Five ounces? Todd? Was it the child's menu? Jeez. No, it was 10 ounces. I could only a get... A slider has more ounces of meat. I don't know. I'm just there to f*** up the sides. Like I will I... also add that Michael is about two Todd's. Physically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's true. I didn't eat the whole thing. It was okay. Okay. Endeavor. But, you know, your mom only has a birthday once a year. Yeah, that's true. I know, and I appreciate you taking her out and showing her a good time. 
<laughs> that sounded like the weirdest diss I've ever heard. Well, your mom only has one birthday. Ma- once Todd's a year. mom out to steak dinner last <laughs> night. Your mom only has one birthday a year. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of mashed potatoes. I feel like so many other side dishes are better versions of what mashed potatoes bring to the table. I like scalloped potatoes better. I do prefer I like scalloped scallop- potatoes. We had scalloped potatoes as our side last night at the Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. Leftovers from Thanksgiving that I am going to eat a ton of after this. Hell yeah. I grew up real poor, so like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese, those are like my comfort foods. You, I, I will say this. Not a, a massive mashed potatoes fan, but I am a huge fan of shepherd's pie. Oof, same. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like, shepherd's pie, so yeah, good. But the mashed potatoes are sort of like, they're a topping at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I put sour cream and roasted garlic in mine and keep them chunkier to kind of like. Hell yeah. Give it Paige. Some oomph. Texture. A little yeah. lump potato. I like that. I got a little Irish in me. I'll eat a potato anyway. You want to for- force yeah, me raw. to. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's funny. I posted uh, that on a podcast. I brought that up. And then I had also said that I loved apple cider. Oh, yeah. And somebody in the comments or somebody tweeted at me and they were like, Oh, apples are literally the potatoes of the fruit world. And I was like, go eat a raw potato and a raw apple and then come report back yeah. to me what happened. What? What does that even mean? Uh, what are you saying? That's, like, like, that's I was, crazy. I was like, I think you're taking like romance languages descriptions of potatoes a little too accurate, a little too literally. Yeah, like palm de terre. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know that. But it- you know what? It's Christmas time. I'm looking forward to warm potato cider. Hell yeah. A nice, <laughs> a nice hot cup of warm cider as you're looking at Christmas lights. Uh, and uh, potato cider. Uh, is it potato cider just vodka? I think it is. Yes. My grandmother loved potato cider. Oh man, she got deep <laughs> yeah. on the cider. Yeah, my my grandma used to drink it out of a coffee mug. Yeah. yeah my family is addicted to potato cider. <laughs> <laughs> we, drink, we drink that <laughs> year round. <laughs> Oh. Um, and finally, our last producer, uh, shout out to the wandering, jolly, holly, unpierced left nipple of the Christmas fool. Wait, why is it unpierced? Pierce both. Go for it. Go bigger. I nipple. don't know. But this just so you know, like I have about uh, 20 or so names in here. 10% of them are nipple based. I, I noticed that. We got to get those numbers up. Nipply crowd. Yeah. yeah. It's a very, well, it is the, it's, it's getting cold outside. It's a bit nipply. <laughs> Well, the nipple is the potato of the body. <laughs> and w- listen, we all originally got f-ed up on nipple cider. Oh, nipple yeah. I mean, nice it is the fact. Nipple cider, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. Oh, I absolutely did not. I, and uh, yet you're the biggest and strongest of all of us. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Baby by Gerber. Made some weird proclivities for me, though. Oh. I hate when women nipple cider their babies in public. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, it, oh my god it's the best part of your day admit you know, it you know what you do there is when you see it happen put your thumb over the baby and then <laughs> and it's kind oh of like no oh no is that not oh, oh god. is that an awful thing for me to have said on my show remind me to only give any of my offspring nipple cider away from y'all i will remind you to do that thank you thank you be like go <laughs> over if there if i know the nipple cider uh receptacle Man, there's I'm not a kind of like i'm not gonna yeah. do it then that's you're for not allowed you. into the nipple cider room at the office you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's for Unless us. your nipple cidering yeah i will add that this is the grossest producer read we've ever done on the show <laughs> no, shout out this is what happens when, like, when i add extra so extra voices into it no no no, no. <laughs> i'm not I'm saying so this as a negative thing oh <sighs> Now that we're we're through there, I actually want to shift gears to romancing the pod. Okay. This is just because you're like, well, Horror Virgin is, is going really well. We should probably do another one of these the same exact way. Because <laughs> it no. makes sense to do it that yeah. way. Like when it you're does like, make this sense. is successful, yeah. let's yeah. do it with rom-coms. That is... I would agree. That would have been the logical like way sure. to arrive at that decision. I think I you're think it's right. Twenty like percent of the decision. Yes, because I'm sure we thought about that. Yes, I think that Mikey and I really wanted to do a podcast with Paige, and yeah. at that point, she had not joined the horror version yet. Um, yeah, and. Really. Yeah. So we started backlogging. We had recorded, yeah, yeah. So because we wanted yeah. to launch with five full episodes, which great idea takes a yeah. long time to produce. Like a side project, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was editing everything, and yeah, and I don't really like romance movies, so like I yes. became the one that was like, I don't like this. 
I was going to yeah. call you a romance virgin, but that's a different thing. Sure, right. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's just called a virgin. We tried that format. So you're comfortable calling me a virgin, but okay. That's well. why we didn't call it that. Yeah. We tried yeah. that format, but it just comes off as us bullying Paige the whole episode. It just <laughs> it wasn't. <That's> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we had started the production on Romance in the Pot already. In fact, I think we had launched already. I think we were like one or two we, episodes we were deep. A week out from launching. I oh, remember. okay. So it was just before launch. Yeah. Okay. It was just before launch. Uh, when Jen, our previous uh, co host on Horror Version, exited. And then we. <laughs> we were already recording that week for the last yes, Romancing yeah. the Pot episode. So we just lumped it in. And I think yeah. we, we uh, sort of announced it on social media, but like on the episode, we were like, hey, Paige is going to fill in and then we never addressed it again. <laughs> right. I just stayed. She's been filling in. So Paige, I don't know. Like, do you want to be the permanent horror virgin host with us? I'll think, I'll think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exclusive. A, a Jeff has cool friends exclusive. Our other co-host is going to come back from those cigarettes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cigarettes yeah. Day day. Now. <laughs> and you got abandoned by a host. That's fascinating. <laughs> Too technically. <laughs> that, yeah. 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 It's cool. um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one that was around at those times. So like, I have to have been the reason they left, you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. So we uh, weren't going to yeah. say it, but <laughs> that's what my dad said to me. So I'm going to say it to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. What were the first, uh, like, how did it come about? Like doing the show? It's just like, we you guys wanted to do a show with Paige. So yeah. Did the five episodes. We had done um, like a guest episode of cult podcast where, Mondo couldn't be there. And so we did like a movie about a cult. Yeah. Cause we, yeah, we didn't want to like interrupt a series that cult podcast was already in. And so we did that movie as the three of us. And that was really fun. And I think it was after that one that we kind of started talking about romancing the pod. It was. Yeah. That was, I, I consider that one like the lost horror virgin episode Yeah, because it bit. is like a horror virgin episode in cult podcast feed. Cause it was yeah. uh, the sanctuary, right? The sacrament. The sacrament. Ty Thank West you. The sacrament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then at the time it was COVID lockdown, and I was yeah. having, I was struggling watching horror films because I was working like ten hours a day yeah. at the office, like seeing patients and stuff still, and like it was like a dark. I was, I was in a dark spot. And I was like, why don't we watch like really light movies and do this, but like not as depressing. And then like, that's kind of how, <laughs> yeah, where that came from. I would like to comment that Michael's like, I was in a very unique position during the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> where i was in a very dark I, spot i would argue that he was yeah, like he, he his was. job is very different from anyone's job Did they know but but everybody there was everybody was struggling i was like i feel like we need a we need a lighter a lighter version of this in truth like, my job is not as stressful as mikey's by any means and i enjoyed it like i was like yes it'd be great to like get together and talk about something way more light yeah yeah that's fair that that is fair. Uh, what are you now? Let's go with favorite rom coms. What do we got? Well, who wants to go first? I have a soft spot in my heart for Can't Buy Me Love. Okay, I do love that one. It's like a movie I watched a lot as a kid, and I watched the like made for TV version of it because we had taped it off TV, much like your grandmother with her VHS. We did oh, yeah. the same thing, but off TV. Like it still had commercials in it. Now, so, like now's when you go back and just watch the commercials, right? <laughs> I if I could find that tape, I would. But we did an episode on that, and I was uh, sort of blown away by how adult some of the stuff is in that oh, movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just did not know that that was in there. But I have a soft spot in my heart for that one. I mean, Princess Bride is probably my favorite, and we okay. haven't gotten we haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, yeah. I thought we were doing episodes we've done. Yeah. Of the ones we've done episodes on, uh, While You Were Sleeping yeah. is a personal fave that I feel like I have to now go out and watch. Because it's also a horror film? A little bit. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's one of those ones where the chemistry is just so off the charts. It works. Yes. Uh, but also we just watched Moonstruck and I loved it and Same. have gone back and watched it. Since. Same. And we Oscar only did it winning, Oscar ago. winning film Moonstruck. Oscar yeah. winning film Moonstruck. Ah, yeah. She's like, come find out. It was pretty good. But I hadn't seen it. Paige, you hadn't seen it either, right? I hadn't seen it. Yeah, I had not seen it. Yeah, it was a first for all of us. And then I talked my sister into seeing it. And then she texted me the next morning and she was like, this is great. Why Something didn't we amazing, watch yeah. this growing up? And I was like, I know. Why didn't I we know, watch this right? growing up? It would have been different yeah. growing up than watching it in your third. We're Italian and loud. So like, we're like, why wasn't this in our lexicon of loud films? Um, but yeah. Mike, what about you? 
I uh, well, the one of the movies I watch when I'm not feeling good is Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Like I post breakup. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's movie. right there with me too. Yeah, love that film. Uh, I would say most of like Elizabeth Town, which is like a terrible like most of the rom coms I love are like bad objectively. That is bad a bad movies. movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so um, I don't know if I can defend that. There's another one that I was really liking, uh, any Christmas romance movie, like hell yeah, 100 percent there, yeah, oh, yeah, all of them. We are very similar in that regard. I love Christmas. Wedding Singer is one that I probably forgot. But yeah, it's funny, Princess Bride. I loved that growing up. Yeah, I got to host uh, Carrie Elwes's panel. Oh, you told really, us about this. And he was like so complimentary to me that I was yeah. like, oh. starting to blush. And I was like, <laughs> of course, it's know. Wesley. Like, how could you it's, not? He's such <laughs> a nice dude. Just like, oh. a, just like so pleasant. I, if I was going to pick one and if I can call a dibs on a, an episode in the future, and it's going to be probably a long way from now, because you're going to be like, I don't even know what that is. Better off dead. Oh, we oh, already did it. We did it, it. with my dad. We, we did it with that. my dad. Yeah. That's one of my favorite <laughs> movies too. Yeah, but that's my dad introduced us to that movie as children, and so we had my dad on that episode. I've had it on every medium. Mm-hmm, I same. had a Better Off Dead poster in my dorm room. Mm-hmm. It is one of the funniest movies of all time. It's so good, yes. man. The it's jokes so are good. perfect. They hold the up. They so hold good. up. They, I'm so mad that you guys did that one. We did. I'm furious with my super supportive <laughs> parents too. I mean, it's like double whammy wow. for you to hate it. <laughs> that is really wow. frustrating. That's so. Mean. And Paige's parents are the best people I may have ever met. Un- unhinged. I love. I'm surprised you guys got that movie in so early. We had to wait oh, yeah. until it was streaming. We we like. Oh yeah. Because we tried to do it earlier and it wasn't streaming, and it came up on Hulu, and yep. we were like, "We're doing it right now before it goes away again." Well, do I knew it. You know, a movie I find interesting in the rom com oeuvre, even though it's sort of an anti rom rom com, is Swingers. I, yeah, I like Swingers. Okay. And yeah, the, the Swingers is great. I'm so interested in that movie is because every time you watch it, it's a different movie, and that's mm. not the case for other films. Like a lot of films stay the yeah. same, but with Swingers, depending on the age with which you see it when you see it for the first time yeah. you're like, these guys are cool and then like as you yep. get older you're like i think this guy's actually a little full of shit. and then yeah. when you get when you become like when you're over 40 like my ancient ass and you're watching it you're like everybody in this entire movie is a liar like you're watching mm-hmm. it you're like you finally get it you're like everybody is in this movie like everybody's just it's so fascinating to watch that movie differently every time and i never got that like i should watch that again like, but the performances in it are also like wonderful. awesome yeah. like when you watch it you're like oh i get vince vaughn's yeah. career after this oh, like sure, i understand yeah. vince yeah. vaughn's character is perfect because the first watch you're like this guy is awesome yeah and the more you get to it the more full of shit he seems yep and it's just it's fascinating to me it's it is it, it's to the point where like i'm I'm fascinated by this flash in the pan concept of, I mean, it's not a flash in the pan, Doug Lyman and, you know, John Favreau, Vince Vaughn, right. it's not a flash in the pan. It's a great, right. it's a great movie. It's just, and also the, the guy that played Sue also plays Vince Vaughn's stepdad in four Christmases, which is just yeah uh, to see it back. But uh, I've never seen a movie that just changes the meaning every single time I see it. It's such an unhinged energy to bring um, to a film. Yeah. So I, I do like that. So Horror Virgin, we're a few hundred episodes in, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, t- almost 300, man. Almost well, we're, we are going to be recording our 300th episode probably sometime next week. Yeah. What are you guys going to cover? <laughs> Should we? We well, here's the about thing it. is only my, yeah. my, my patrons are only going to find out about this tomorrow. And then next Everyone week, the three else. episode will go up. I don't know how you all feel. I personally don't care if we announce it. I don't it. care. Like, I don't yeah, care yeah, 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 about yeah. announcing it. Yeah. Uh, we're doing the original Psycho because we yeah. haven't done it yet. No, we haven't done never a lot done of it. Yeah. yet. Yeah. That is awesome. That that was on that. That was pretty high on that list. I don't know if you guys have Yeah. 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 I don't know if you guys have heard of it. And it's also Psycho is fascinating in that it will never be able to be what it was. Like we can't have yeah, it. Won't like live anymore. up be- to the hype. Ever. Well, it's not just that. It's just it won't live up to the lack of spoilers. Yeah. Like yeah. back then, like we used to be a proper country, but people could, if Alfred Hitchcock says, "Don't f- tell people what happens in this movie. Don't f- ruin it for everybody," and people are like, 
excellent point. And now people would be like, I cannot wait for my three hour YouTube review. I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait to exploit someone else's genius for my content. Yes, bro. That is like yeah. my like. That's my. That's like what we one. do. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I don't know if I've told this on on the other podcast, but my parents went to go see Empire Strikes Back opening weekend. Oh uh, But God. they weren't the first showing. There was a showing before. Did them. they get Homer Simpson? Yep, a guy came out of the theater and was just like, "I can't believe that let Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker's dad." And a couple of guys got out of line, chased that dude into the parking lot, beat the shit out of him. And then everyone else let those guys have their spots back in line. And they just quietly went in to see the movie. 1980 was awesome. <laughs> I was like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. That's 100% correct. That's literally a bit from The Simpsons. And it happened yes, to your parents. It happened to my parents. Yeah. <laughs> they were in I college did, at the time. I did something similar to my friend to the movie Patch Adams. Oh. <laughs> I told her that like when he's like looking out over that cliff, like an hour 95 into the or an hour 35 into the movie, he jumps. And so like she was waiting for it the whole time. And then like when he doesn't and like it becomes like a happy little thing mo movie at the end. She literally like turned around and was like, you're a d does Patch Adams become a happy little movie at the end? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> like he, so depressing. I gotta it's tell you, the most depressing movie. He, he becomes you. like a happy doctor guy. Kind I went of thing. on my first date to that movie. Oh, and... no. <laughs> like first date ever? I I might as well have seen the breakup on that. Movie. <laughs> that is also which is another movie that when I watched the breakup, I was oh. like, who the f is this for? I right? right that movie is unhinged. we've done that too right we have yeah, done we that that's that. the one where they like duct tape down the center of the apartment right yeah that yeah. movie john michael higgins first off is a delight in that film and yes. he may have helped me win some money on america says nice Fine. uh very nice guy. <laughs> very funny friend character. of the pod john michael higgins who is yeah. that f movie for because that yeah. movie is just like hey relationships are futile Right, like that's yeah, the it's energy pretty dark. That you get out of it is, is it's mm -hmm. just like, hey, shit don't work out, and it's like, who's go who's going to like seeing Patch Adams on a date because that was marketed as a rom com, and then three quarters of the way, spoiler alert on the thirty year old movie or the twenty five year old movie, spoiler alert, she gets murdered. She gets murdered. His love interest gets murdered, and the movie just fully shifts. That movie's so dark that the real Patch Adams is like, I don't like that movie. Yeah. The yeah. real Patch Adams is like, take your royalty check out. Yeah, of he, yeah he came out. Yeah, he came out of the interview. He's like, I, 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 he's like, I don't like it. Robin Williams had some nine, 1997 to 1999 was a, a very dark time for Robin <laughs> Williams. Uh, he's had darker. Um, yeah, clearly. But uh, <sighs> but the where he did like what dreams may come, which certainly has mm -hmm. like a hopeful ending, but also is just incredible. Wild. Max von Sydow is in that movie for God's sakes. Like that's how you know it's dark. Um, like and then Patch Adams and I mean even Goodwill Hunting it has a lot of darkness in it. Yeah, and love that movie though. Widower, like like man, like nineteen ninety seven to nineteen ninety nine were the second worst era for Robin Williams. I love. I mean, they're just great movies, that is, but Goodwill yeah, Hunting I was gonna say they're my, good movies. They're just not like comedies, you know. Goodwill Hunting is my forgetting Sarah Marshall. Like if when I'm sad, I love Goodwill, Goodwill Hunting. Hunting, which I'm such a stereotype. I put that on. I just want scumbags with Boston accents telling me it's gonna be okay. I'm like yeah. that's what I look for. Oh, um, such a good. I, I realize I'm looking at the time. Uh, we have to finish the regular episode. Patrons, stick okay. around. We're going to do mm -hmm. a, a quick little Patreon exclusive content with the slash romancing the pod folks. But while I have you guys here as we're leading in, um, Horror Virgin and Romancing the Pod available everywhere, right? Everywhere, yeah. baby. Yeah. Okay. Please rate and review and listen and subscribe and yeah. uh, all the stuff, notifications. Uh, these are, it's such a great show, a wonderful, wonderful cast of people doing wonderful stuff. I really love what you guys are working individually. Does anybody have anything to plug? This is actually the time of year that I mostly take off uh, because I travel so much the rest of the year, but come January, uh, Roast Battles California Cup. So if Nine. you're in the LA area, uh, there's about, I think, four shows uh, at Jam in the Van. So I'll announce dates for those on Instagram. Nice. 
cool. Michael, it's mental health. Anything you want to promote? Y'all just want to send me money to my house. Uh, <laughs> Give your address. Send it to the P.O. box. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Bluff I'll call, make right? sure he gets it. <laughs> oh, I do have things for you from the Colt Podcast post office box because people made you more Taylor Swift bracelets and they're pretty great. Hell yeah. No, you can find me at my socials at M Randolph 24. Uh, I guess I can plug my own socials, but that's yeah. pretty much yeah, it. I, and I'm mm -hmm. a Todd J. Awesome. I, Mikey and I don't tour like Paige does, but um, I mean, unless we're doing shows for the horror version, which I think we're going to try and do one in the South and mm -hmm. in the West in 2024. You're in the West. You mean yeah, the the West. West. well, I yeah. think we'll probably do LA again. And I want to do a Nashville show. I want to get Paige to Nashville. I yeah. would love to go to Nashville to eat at that donut place. I follow on Instagram. Ooh, five daughters, five baby. Daughters, yeah. Five daughters. Oof. Oh, sign me up for five daughters, but not the not the donuts. Uh, <laughs> also, I think I said follow me on Instagram and they did not give my Instagram handles. So <laughs> it's, it's at Paige it's Wesley or yeah. uh, Rampage at, Wesley. At Rampage Wesley. Yeah, yeah. it's Paige Wesley everywhere else. No, Paige Wesley only on Twitter. Everything else is Rampage Wesley. Oh, okay, okay. As a reminder for all of you, that's Rampage, R-A-M-P-A-I-G-E-W-E-S-L-E-Y. -E uh, Randolph, uh, Michael Randolph is M-R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H. Thank you. 24. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Todd, Todd, you can, yours is easy. Yeah, it's it's both Ds, J, awesome. Yeah, Todd, that's it. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. For me, guys, folks, uh, if you are listening to the free episode, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. While you're here, if you want to um, subscribe, hit the notifications bell and f rate and review, it sure would make my life better. It's free for you. I don't know why you haven't done that before. Yeah. But past that, too, um, you can check me out at uh, patreon.com slash Jeff May for early access to uncensored episodes with bonus content, which we're about to record, um, as well as you can get access to Patreon exclusive shows like Ugg Fine with Kim Crawl, uh, as well as early access to Nerd with Dre Alvarez. Um, such great shows. You can also get Tom and Jeff watch Batman on Gamefully Unemployed and all the stuff I do with Adam Todd Brown over on You Don't Even Like This Network. Um, so past that. Mint on Card is the second Friday of every month at Blast from the Past in beautiful Magnolia in Burbank, California. Totally free show in a toy store. Super fun. Very good. I'm going to stop talking because you guys have probably already stopped listening. So love you all. See you patrons in about mm, eight seconds. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Our artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as artnessbyjustinbrown.com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at troynababon.com. Nababon is spelled N-A-B-A-B-A-N, and boy, does that shred. Thank you all so much for listening. See you next time.